the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. That is what Jesus wants for you. And with me is Ronnie Servino, and he teaches you actually in how to do that. Ronnie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Barb. It's great to be here. So you learned about healing. How did you find out about all that? Well, I first went to this conference and I saw this man, you know, laying hands on the sick and healing this person that had a leg shorter than the other. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Right. Right. I'm like, is this for real? Yeah, I was like, is this is... Uh... Now, were you raised like that or not at all? No, no, I was raised in a church which did believe in the move of the Spirit, but never really emphasized praying for the sick. Uh, so the first time I saw it, it was like sh a shock for me. It was amazing. But I said, God, please, I want that. I found out it was in the Bible. First of Corinthians 12. No way. You found out healing the sick is in the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that's kind of funny, isn't it? So, but wanting it and doing it are two different things. So how does it, how did you get started in all this? Well, basically I said, I asked the people that were doing it, how do you do it? And they said, you go and pray for the sick. So... That's what I did. And for almost 50 to 80 people, I did that. And unfortunately, no one got healed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. That is funny because what, what I say so often when I teach about healing is like, don't just pray for six to eight people, pray for 200 and then come talk to me. Yes, so, exactly. So, you know, it's, it, it's that one football points that's going to matter and nobody is really noticing after that the first 200 they missed yes. you know so how did you did you go after it harder or were you like well this is not for me i decided i was going to do it anyways and there was one day when i went to a mission trip in peru this man came he lay hands on me and he said you are receiving what you've been asking for and it was an impartation i didn't know anything about it but i just said i'm going to keep praying for the sake as i did but i saw a transformation i saw deaf ears open i saw this kid that had a fever just instantaneously leave and we saw legs growing it was just an amazing trip i mean we had lines of people outside in parks and wow. like 90 percent of the people would be healed out of their 90 percent it was like crazy wow <laughs> so how did you do it uh, <laughs> it was a you did the same thing. thing? It was the same thing, but once I saw the first one, I got faith. <laughs> or I don't know what I what happened in me, but I was like, let's see more and let's see more. And then, then I started going for the, you know, because we always, I, in my case, it was like, oh, headaches. And, you know, if your uh, arm hurts or whatever. But then I was like, oh, the, a deaf person. I want to pray for that person. And we saw, saw that person healed. And wow. this leg, it's like, yes, God, it just like raised up my faith. Now, there's often people that are saying, well, is this for real? Or are you making this up? Or there's something you just said. You said, I, I, I got faith. Why do you say that? I had faith before, but once I saw it, it's like, I don't know if my faith raised the level or I just believed. I think my mind was transformed to know that it was real. Everything that I had seen on those people was real for my life. And I, I believed that it could be possible everything or at least, you know, more and more through my life. Wow. So you wanted more. Yes. You got home and you say, I can do this, but I did in Peru, I'm gonna do right now, right here. I know exactly what was going on. Am I right? Yeah, that's like... Right on, right on. <laughs> and then what? It kind of stopped. <laughs> What? Yep, yeah, I started, you know, um, praying for the sick in Mexico, but I don't know if it was because I was in a mission trip, surrounded by people that also had faith, because we were like 60 people, you know, and uh, I loved that we were, you know, raising each other up, but then no one told me how to steward the gift. And Stewarding the gift, what do you mean by that? Yeah, well, there, when I came back home, there was no one that, there to tell me that things were not going to happen still. <laughs> I thought, now everything's going to happen. You know, every time I pray for the sick, people are going to get healed, or at least they're going to get better. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Not everything, you know, we go to the reality that sometimes it doesn't happen. But our experience should not determine the 
faith or the belief that we have in what we already saw or what actually the Bible says. Wow, that's a powerful statement right there. So we expect God to do it our ways, so we start relying on ourselves? Yeah, on our experience, on the things we believe or see, but we should actually base on the Word of God, on what the Word of God says. And the Word of God says, lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. But there was no one there to teach me, but I still believe, so I kept on praying. The weird thing is, because my mindset had been put in a way, in a box, I only saw healings whenever we went on missions and not when I was home. Oh, that's almost like here in Reading at Bethel, we see all these miracles all the time, and then we're home, it feels almost like we're reserving ourselves more because it's in a different kind of an atmosphere. Right. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yes, sometimes the atmosphere can totally change what huh. happens. Doesn't that have to do kind of with how much we believe? on moments like that, the level of faith or being comfortable in a group setting but not on our own? Yes. Isn't there a lack of faith in those moments? That's correct. It's a lack of faith. It's a lack of believing. It's kind of like, you know, the environment pushes us sometimes that you mentioned at Bethel, the worship and the people and healings and, and all this. And the art and the dance. And, and you're like, yes, God can do anything. But then you're home and there's none of that. There's just you and the person. Wow. And you have to believe the same way as if you were with everything else around you. Wow. So how do you turn that around? How do you actually believe alone at home or on the streets? just as much or even more as when you're in a group setting or on a mission trip. How do you break lack off and start having that faith to move those mountains? Because the Bible does say, heal the sick. Stay tuned. Are you ready to inspire and change lives? You can make a difference for a better tomorrow. God created you for more. You matter. There is an unprecedented pandemic of forgotten hearts. You can bring hope and answers. Inmates feel alone, afraid, and abandoned. Now is the time to find, to stand, to change, and transform lives. God loves them unconditionally. Adopt a Champion empowers inmates to be a champion within themselves, within their family, and in the world. There are three ways you can help. Become part of our team, pray and donate. Together, we can make a difference. You can start today. Go to adoptachampion.org. Ronnie, we just talked about you stewarding the gift of healing. Can anybody heal or can there only be specific peoples that could do the healing? No, anyone, anyone that has the Holy Spirit living in them, which is accepting Christ, receiving Christ, because our nature changes, we can take what we have inside of us and release it into a healing, healing power. So you came back out of Peru. Yes. You were not seeing the same results at home. You saw deaf ears open. I'm like, wow, you know? And here you're home, you're doing the same thing, everything the same, and it's not quite ha happening that way. You said stewarding. I wonder, could it have to do with identity? How does that work? Yes, when we know who we really are in Christ, we can really know that Jesus can move anywhere, at any point, in any time, because we are one with the Father. And when we're one, one with the Father, I mean, the Holy Spirit can move in any church setting, in the outside, in our work, wherever we are, the Father can release His healing power. Now, I'm listening to you saying that, and I'm like, I get it. I get everything you're saying. Now what? So, you know, how does that apply? Well, once you know who you are in Christ, I mean, we're always finding out, but once you know that the Father is with you, that there is no limitation of place or where you are, then you start releasing the power of God just by believing and laying hands on the sick, as the Bible says. So you actually go and pray for the sick and you will see things happen. Is that what happened for you? Yes, actually. Well, what happened is I started going on missions and I saw healings, but then there was someone that taught me about 
the love of the Father. And after being a Christian for so many years, for like 20 years, it was 19 years exactly, someone told me about the love of God that never ceases to love at any point in time. And when I understood the love of the Father and I was immersed in the love and the waves of love for about one whole day, that it just came and came over me. After that moment, I was completely changed. And every time I prayed for the sick, I, we didn't see it. But I knew that I was doing the right thing. And we saw an exponential change in the way that we, in the results that we got. So the love of the Father for the person you're praying for, the love of the Father for you, the love of the Father, how, because I have experienced that love of the Father. And it is like, it's, you, you just want more. Yeah, want you more. just want more. That's it right. is this unconditional, deep love all of a sudden inside of you. And you're like, that's good. That is it. I, you don't even know. How do you explain that? Well, I know I, I've explained like waves coming upon me. I can still feel them every time I talk about it. It's like, you know, like always, constantly, not never ending, like a sea coming and going, coming and going, loving you all the time. And as you mentioned, it's not only a love that he has for me, which I first need to understand it, because many people are like, yeah, father loves you, but they don't understand the love for them. Once you understand the love for you, then you can give out the love for the other people, which is like the same love, but now coming from a place of being loved. Hold on, I, I am getting it, but I'm still wrestling with it because I'm thinking of the viewer right now, our friends. How can they get that love? What is it? Because I know people believe in Jesus. I know they know it's all about agape love and unconditional lungs, but how can you actually get it? Is there something you have to do for you to help to steward that? Well, you can actually ask for it. I started pursuing the miracles. Since the miracles were not following me, I pursued the miracles. So I started following people that were actually living in that revival and those miracles. And whenever I went there, they had revelations like this one, the love of the Father. And I actually got it in a conference. I heard someone speak about it. He didn't even pray for me. He just said, and I got this, and this happened to me. And suddenly it was like an impartation. I was in the crowd with thousands of people, literally. And then God gave it to me because I was seeking to be transformed in a way that the miracles and the transformation for other people would also right. come to them. So what I just experienced is when I was in, um, in Holland just about four or five weeks ago, and I was alone, like you said, in Bethel, it seems to be so easy here with the perfect atmosphere, right? The worship, the dance, and the singing, and all together. But there I was alone in a conservative church, and nobody else was interesting, neither did they understood about healing at all. And I saw all these people, all these Christian people sick around me, just, just kind of just, I was like, oh Lord, I want to pray for them. I want to pray for them. And I didn't because there was this like, oh no, let me first read Randy Clark's book on healing one more time. Oh wait, no, let me pray more. Oh gosh, I fell asleep in my Bible again. I haven't prayed enough. I am alone here. This is I, 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 this is not working, right? And then a week into this, I had prayed for nobody. And then in the middle of the night, I cried out to God. I said, Jesus, I don't have to do this. You're the one doing this. That's right. And that moment, there was like a complete switch. And then I went to this woman that had a stroke and she was not a believer or, or she had changed and twisted things. She kind of turned into Jehovah Witness and different things. And, I, and, and the little voice inside keeps telling me, no, wrong timing. No, you can't do it. It's going to fail anyways. This is not going to work. And finally, I realized this was my last chance. I went to her, said, can I pray for you? Pulled her out of her work. And she said, yes. And she was able, she had a stroke, so the right side of her body, but the right side of the body was all not functioning right. And all of a sudden, she was able to walk without a cane, without a weight, and I prayed for her. And it was Jesus doing it. It didn't feel like the kind of deep love that moment of the Father. Yeah. 
-hmm. but I had surrendered that I was the, not the one that had to do it, but he was doing it through me. Right. Can you relate to that? Yes. When, <laughs> when you have an experience, like you said, with the Father, you, the Holy Spirit is not only living in you, but resting upon you, like with Jesus and the dove. Wow. So you're carrying the dove. And when you carry the dove, I mean, everything is possible. I remember two weeks ago, we went to Wisconsin. I want to hear that in just a moment. There might be healing that you're looking forward or prayer that you want or us to connect with you. Go to barbtv.org. Know this, God wants you healed too. Stay tuned. Barb TV is all about you getting the needs met that you have. Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life, but Jesus wants to give you the abundant life. How do we do that? We have guests with stories, and God wants to do the stories again in your life. He wants to change your life, He wants to improve your life, and He wants you to have all the benefits. So you're saying stewarding God's love is, is, is the big deal, the big deal for you to be able to step into more, to heal the sick, because Jesus is inside of us. Yeah. Have you ever experienced, give, give me an example of that. Well, first of all, when we steward God's love, we can love people well. And as, you, as we've been saying throughout the show, we can pray for the sick, we can you know, release healing, but sometimes it doesn't happen. But if we love well, we're doing our, jo our job well because we can't heal the sick. Correct. But we can love well and we can show the love of the Father. And I was in Wisconsin and we were praying for the sick and there was this young man. He had something, going, something wrong with his right shoulder. It was just torn. It was bad. The ligaments were torn. The, it was even the cartilage had been, you know, bare badly, badly broken, and he, they, he couldn't lift his arm this up. For six months, he was taking ibuprofen and all that stuff. It didn't work. And we were just praying on him. We were laying hands. We were releasing the love of God, and we had to pray six times over him. Six times where we were like, God, 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 God. But then I remember the love of God. I was like, you know what? I feel that God wants to release his love over you. So I, that's what I prayed. I said, God, release your love and your healing power over this man. After that, he tried it again, and he was like moving Whoa. his arm up and down like nothing had happened. He's like, I can't believe it. The pain hadn't gone away in six months. Wow. And wow. when you, even when you keep praying, you know, sometimes we keep praying just because we want to see a miracle. But when, when we're praying because we really love, then it's easy because God loves more than us. <laughs> Isn't that what we're all longing for? Like that deep, deep love. Now, you just wrote a book. Yes. In Spanish and just that came out in English. What is your book all about? Yes. Well, the book is basically learning how to steward, steward the identity that we have so that we can release the miracles in our daily lives. And you have experienced that nonstop. Yes. So now you train and teach people all the time too. So if people would like to take a class to you, which is, I believe, in Spanish, yes. but, but if people wanted to take classes, what kind of a class are you actually teaching? God's love, I assume, or stewarding God's love, or is it something different? Well, basically we talk about identity. It's the next course is starting in April, and it's called Real. And basically what we want is for the transformation, the supernatural power of God to be real in every person. And for that, we have to teach identity. And then we teach, of course, physical healing, how to release healing over the sick. So talking about the identity, what would be one of your first pointers for people to step into that identity well, for them to, to receive that love even, you know? 
the identity, I believe the righteousness. That would be the main point. Why righteousness? Because when you realize how righteous you are in the eyes of the Lord, when he sees you, he smiles because of how amazing and beautiful and the nature that Jesus has transformed from death to life into you. And when he sees you, he smiles and he loves you. And if you know that God is always smiling when he sees you, then you know he's backing you up in whatever you do. Wow. So you're saying shame and guilt should not be our main thing in our heart anymore, but walking in that righteousness. Doesn't the armor of God talk about that? Yes. You know, the breastplate of righteousness. So, so how do you put on the breastplate of righteousness? How do you actually carry that? Basically, it's transforming your mind, knowing that you are righteous when you walk with God. That when you, yeah, you may sin. But if you're a person that's walking with the Lord, that righteousness never changes. It's not like I sinned today and now my righteousness has changed. No, my righteousness is always, I'm righteous before God. So if I'm always righteous before God, I always have access to whatever God's offering. And whatever God's offering is the power to heal. Wow. Wow. You make it so sound so simple, like <laughs> so incredible simple. I'm like, is it really that simple? It is. Wow. Living a life of transformation, living a life where you really see miracles in your daily life. And it's not something like, oh, I have to do this. We have to realize how spiritual we are. What you're saying is we can't earn it. Yes, exactly. We cannot earn it. We cannot. So um, would you be willing? I know the Lord is going to we, we are all, we stream here all over the world. We're literally all over the world. And what I'd like to do right now is to speak to our friends and see what the Lord gives us and to pray specifically for that person for healing right now. Yes. Can we do that right now? Let's do it. All right. All right. Uh, I believe that, the, that Jesus wants to heal your back. There are many people that have back issues. And right now, in Jesus' name, I want to release the testimony that we heard from a man that he literally saw the finger of God go like this in his back. And he was like saying, God's doing a surgery on my back. And he could see, hear the bones crack as the finger of God was moving. So I right now release the finger of God over your back, over your lower back, over your upper back. And I also see kidneys, kidneys that are being transformed, kidneys that need trans something, some type of transfusion or something. In Jesus' name, I believe that God wants to give you a new kidney. And right now, I also see the power of God laying in, in the knees. Your knees, I, I believe that there's people that have had accidents and had had surgery in their knees. And right now, in Jesus' name, I say to every ligament, every rotator cuff, in Jesus' name, be healed right now. Mm. Amen. What I also saw was a, shri a, sh a shriveled hand, a left hand that won't get warm. So you're going to be able to do a thumbs up. <laughs> you're going to be able to do a thumbs up and that hand is going to actually be warm and no longer cold. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. It's that simple. That's all we have to do. That's all we have to do. And we have had transformation through zoom all the time we had a actually a woman you mentioned she couldn't move her two fingers because some kind some type of disease that she had and she's she didn't believe she was like oh that healing is not real and i said there's oh, a hand don't say that <laughs> there's oh, a hand that right now that. it's being transformed and suddenly she felt this urge to lift it up and phew, she wow. said her hand popped up just up like and that. she's like, I'm healed. She's like, <laughs> I didn't believe. <laughs> so good. Now, what we hear sometimes is that they the pain level goes down. People start feeling better. There is a transformation, but then it comes back. How do people steward their healing? That is a great question. Stewarding their, your healing is number one, knowing that God wants you healed. So if you start feeling better, you know, claim that and say, you know, God started a healing process. Sometimes it's a process, sometimes it's instantaneous, but if it's a process, let God finish what he started. We've prayed for so many people that, you know, we start and then 17 days later, they're transformed, their ears pop open or something. Wow, wow. So, you know, and also if you've been healed from something that you can't eat, sugar, then don't go and eat Seven donuts. <laughs> <laughs> steward the body, huh? Yes, yeah, steward your body. <laughs> Take care of the body well. That's that right. makes total sense. Now, you have a website. If people want to connect with you, 
answer. And find out more about you. What is your website? Well, the website is servinoministries.com. So like my last name, just uh, at ministries.com. Okay. It's in Spanish. And we also are almost about to release the English. Wow. And there's also the book that you can find there. And it's been in English and in Spanish. And um, I just have to tell you, I just got that book this week. And I have been part of the healing rooms and different things for several years. I've read it, done conferences. But when I actually opened, opened up Ronnie's book and, and, and skimmed through it, I haven't read the whole thing yet. He gave me the answers of the missing pieces. It made a huge difference for me. What was new to me was to steward God's love. And that's what I want for you as well. Ronnie, thank you so much for joining us and to be with our show. In one quick, quick se sentence, what has been the biggest healing you've ever seen? The biggest healing I've ever seen has been this girl that was, they were going to do heart surgery on her. They basically, um, we prayed for her. They didn't do the surgery, and in four months, she grew what she should have grown in a year because wow. she was tiny because of her heart disease. Oh, I could feel that. I could <laughs> feel that. That is my God. <laughs> that is my God. He loves you, and so do I, and he wants you well. Connect with us, barktv.org, and know this. God believes in you, and so do I. I could see all these people talking about how they saw visions and that how they saw angels. I started getting frustrated because I could not see anything and I heard this teaching about how we are all wired to hear the voice of God, but we hear it in a different way. He created me in a way that I could hear His voice by knowing stuff. Do you trust every word that's been given to you? No. How do you test it? 